Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is month number two, looking at operations and relations of sets, with a brand new video every single day for the whole month of October. In this video, we're looking at predication in set theory. Theory. Now, early in this series, we discussed three different ways to define a class or a set. Up to this point, we've only really used the method of listing all of the elements of a class or a set. While this is clear and explicit, we may want to define a class in terms of a specific predicate, or define a predicate as a collection of individuals given a class. This will help us out when we want to define things like infinite classes or infinite sets. Now, First off, let's take a look at classes defined by predicates. So let's say we want to define a particular class R as all things that have the property G. Perhaps G means is green. We cannot list all the things that are green. At least we can't do it easily. But we can still define this class. The statement R is equal to the set of X bar GX defines R as the class of all things which have the property G. However, predicates can also simply be understood as the property held by all and only members of a given class. We can reduce predication to a set theory relationship in doing this. When you say that something is green, you're actually just saying that it's a member of the class of all green things. This gets into interesting questions of do all classes really define something that's actually a predicate if I have the set of or the class of the tallest tree, the planet Jupiter, and my left toe. Is there really a predicate that describes those? You might call that a disjunctive kind, but we can set those aside for later. For now, understand that we can at least define some predicates in terms of simply being a class of things. This can be helpful for explaining predicates which may not map onto inherent properties of objects. While I say that Bintu is on the faculty, when I say that Bintu is on the faculty, it seems I'm talking more about Bintu's relation to a group or membership in a class than some inherent property of Bintu. While we might represent this as FB, where F is is a member of the faculty and B is been to, we could also represent it as B is a member of the set X such that X is a member of the faculty. Using this understanding, we can give a more explicit definition of kind of our X bar PX. For all classes A and all predicates P, A is identical to the class, the class of x bar px is defined as for all y, y is a member of a is materially equivalent to y is a p. Note that y in this is not necessarily a set or class itself. Also note that the x is not used as the variable here, but part of the full symbol x bar px. This is why it has no quantifier. It's not actually a free variable, it's just part of a symbol. We're gonna call this class predication definition in proofs. And formally we might say for all A, for all classes A and all predicates P, A is equal to the symbol X bar PX means by definition for all Y, Y is a member of A is materially equivalent to y is a p. Up next, we're going to be taking a look at what is a power set. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you like this content and you want to see more and you want to make sure you stay caught up with all the new videos we're doing on set theory. There's a brand new one every single day for the whole month of October. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.